Peeps, what is going on? Welcome back, or welcome for the first time, I'm not too sure, but you're tuned in to another episode of the Friday Flows. I'm Cameron here from the Tynes team, and today we've got another special guest, and we've got another special story to share. One thing I want to say just before we we get into it, um, because today's episode we are centering on uh, handling, using Tynes to handle guard duty alerts from AWS. Tynes and AWS have a really, really strong partnership we would be an official automation partner of aws and there's so many stories if you go to the story library on our website you'll see the range of different use cases that we have with aws so yes there's a security focus on the ones a day but everything from monitoring infrastructure closing open s3 buckets all of that stuff is there um, and to be honest with you a lot of it is is, is very automatable work workload and um, that probably doesn't especially if you look at Soar platforms probably doesn't get a lot of attention, you know, and I think these kind of use cases and these kind of stories and times, they really kind of demonstrate the versatility and also the value that they can bring because we're not just strictly talking about, hey, we're ingesting something from ADR and, you know, doing some enrichments like there, there's such a there's such a, a wide variety of things that you can do, especially with AWS and Tynes. So really excited to get it going today. And uh Today we have obviously our special guest, Meg uh, LC, who's from our American team here at Times. Meg, thanks for jumping on. How are you doing? Hey Cameron, doing good. Thanks for having me. Nice. To show folks some of the stuff they can do with Amazon. I sit in Seattle, Washington. So obviously we've got a lot of Amazon right here in our backyard. We use a lot of Amazon at Times. We're built on AWS. So can't wait to show you one of these flows. Unbelievable. Love it. Love it. Thanks a million. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's jump in and take a look. Awesome. So the most exciting part of any day, let's take a look at this time story. Yeah. Awesome. So here's a pretty simple story that you might use if you have times and also use AWS for basically anything, because guard duty is one of those products that is a security product. It sits in your AWS environment and can monitor any number of services you might be using. So if you're built entirely on AWS, if you host some things on AWS, this could be of value to you. Quick little overview here for folks who might not be familiar with Tynes, might not be familiar with AWS, or might just be wondering what's going on in this particular flow. Here in the middle, we've got the Tynes storyboard. That's this black dotted area where I'm able to drag and drop these colorful boxes, which we call action. These eight action types are all you need to build a story completely from scratch in Tynes. But as Cameron said, most people don't need to build things from scratch. They use our pre-built action templates where you can find a ton of AWS services and products and our story library where you can fork this story and stories like it in order to get them spun up in your environment quickly where all you need to do is add the right credentials for things like your ticketing service, your AWS environments, etc. All right. So quick intro to the data that you see moving through the story. Here we've sent a credential exfiltration finding and I'm just sending sample alerts via guard duty and we've got a little guide on how to do that here even. Up here, I have a webhook consuming from the SNS or the push notification service from AWS. And this is actually something really cool, Cameron, that I think goes to your point that we can do tons of security use cases. We are a security tool through and through. That said, Amazon SNS is a great, again, service you can use with any AWS product to get better and richer notifications outside of the AWS console. Here, we're consuming them with this simple webhook action. If you've ever used a webhook in your life, it's just like that. It passively consumes data. We point things at it. It ingests those things. From here, we're going and grabbing the event. Now notice, this story is gonna work for me in this branch to handle my guard duty issues forever. On this side of the branch, it works on my initial setup. So once I set up this story, it's gonna help me get things set up with SNS and then use those SNS notifications as they come into Tynes. Now, one thing you can see if I open my events panel here is that even just on this second step where we're expanding the event that we got from Amazon's SNS service, we're gonna start stacking up all the data in JSON and that's where you're seeing this event, the little white bubble in the top, or the little numbered bubble in the top right hand corner, move through this part of the story and this branch 
because we expanded the event and afterwards we checked if it was a guard duty alert using a Tynes trigger, created a ticket for it, and then sent it into the branch for the right type of guard duty alert so that we could do any auto remediation steps and go ahead and update the ticket so some poor analyst doesn't have to do it themselves. Now, any questions there, Cameron, or things that you think folks might be interested in about this story? No, I think overall, like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really effective and it's a really simple story. I think one thing, just as a as a curveball, like obviously the last couple of years, especially what we've seen with with, with some customers, is a transition, obviously away from on prem environments to cloud environments and. There's potentially, as you migrate to the cloud, there's more security risk as there's more to protect and the potential unknowns there. So from what you've seen, Meg, you know, the level of value of automating these types of use cases, have you seen many, many customers or any prospects that we've had um, looking at use cases like this? Like how common is this to, to be looking at alerts in, uh, in AWS as an automatable use case? Oh, absolutely. I would say... About half the people I talk to are actively considering some kind of use case in Tynes that you wouldn't call pure security, given that we've had DevOps teams for about a decade now. Hopefully my audio didn't cut out there. I was saying since yeah. we've had DevOps teams, I don't think exactly. It's too crazy. Now I'm going to go ahead and run more traffic through this story. You just saw me do that by sending this. I could send this again, and I could even do things like adjust these particular three, again, particular examples I have to send data through a story like this and test it once I've built it. I think that goes to your point about attack surface, right? If what you've done is transitioned from hosting your own infrastructure, even partially to a cloud environment or an entirely cloud environment, attack surface is certainly one of the things you're worried about. I think people are also just worried about the infrastructure being managed at all and the idea that they're going to have less control over it. Sometimes people need to adjust to the idea that they're actually going to have more control over it when people don't need to physically walk to a box and someone can do things like what you see here where we are revoking a role in IAM, right? We're going into the Identity Access Manager solution in AWS if this trigger is met for the right type of credential exfiltration. And this seems pretty narrow. We're doing a particular regex. We could use any of these comparators or even formulas that we wrote ourselves. But we could also get even more specific with this if what we knew is even for particular types of credential exfiltration, we do something a little bit different in our organization. So you can see I can start stacking up rules here and get as narrow and granular as I want. And you already kind of see that with this lateral scale right here. These are three different things that we think most people are going to have to deal with at some point if they're in the cloud. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when that kind of attack occurs and what they have in place in order to stop it and stop it quickly. Even the best analyst in the world usually can't beat the computational speed of a machine. I think this is also the kind of thing that people tend to really like, as if at the end of the day, let's just say these three types of things right? An EC2 instance being a little too open, a credential being exfiltrated, and an S3 bucket having a public policy when it's supposed to remain private, sensitive, or confidential. Those are all three the kinds of things that if we auto-remediate any one of them and start cleaning up these tickets such that I have to review them at the end of the day as an analyst instead of them being part of my process flow, we're going to free up as much time as I'm spending on these three issues. And my question starts to become not only what are the only types of AWS issues that we might hear about through guard duty and be able to add to our push subscription service that we could remediate here and take off that analyst's plate? And then honestly, sometimes I start thinking about the next story or even things that might never be automated on a time story about, okay, if these three types of things are off my analyst's plates, what am I able to ask them to do? What cool piece of malware did we see but not have a chance to dive deep into or, you know, publish a white paper on to show that we have pretty impressive security chops internally yeah. because yeah. no, my analysts were instead buried in their, you know, 30th <laughs> credential exfiltration ticket of the day. A hundred percent. And also like in looking, there's, there's something oddly satisfying about how those triggers kind of look because really the beauty of something like this is it's, it's a visual process map. 
you know, something, as you said, that example you just made to, you know, the transition to the cloud and obviously looking at something like this where it's so visual, it's it's in front of you, the entire automation of the workflow is self-documented. You know, yeah. and as you said, there's a time savings there. There's a standardization factor that comes in here that, you know, obviously it lays a lot of security concerns and frees the bandwidth up for uh, for more interesting stuff to be done within the security team, Meg. So really, a uh, really nice job. And thanks a million for sharing it with us. Thanks. And if I can highlight just two or three more things that I think folks would be really interested in, as I am a bit of an infrastructure nerd myself, I come from a DevOps background and I sit here in Seattle I don't think Amazon is our only cloud titan, right? Tynes works equally well with any of the cloud providers that you might be using. So yeah, you're going to find lots of AWS in here. But if you're hosting elsewhere, please come into Tynes. Start looking not only for the cloud hosting providers you're using here, but also for things like your cloud security provider. We do a lot of work with companies like Wiz. And I hear all the time, I started monitoring my cloud environment for security issues. It's great. Oh no, once they see the volume. So just one thing I like to point out. And then the other thing that I think you highlighted that's really awesome there is also things like whether or not something is auditable and if your GRC team is going to like it, right? So those are also the kind of things where I'll show you the thing that always makes somebody like Niall, our GRC specialist, happy. I can come in here and look at any of these story runs, even just the three simple ones I sent through, and once I select one of these routes that we've gone to, I can dive into any granular step of this and take a look at the data that moved through the story at a particular timestamp. So you're right, this is all of that extensibility without sacrificing really the auditability that you might've liked about scripts. I'll also say this is probably more auditable in scripts in the same way it's more self-documenting. Here are all of the actions that I am able to use. And like you just said, if what I want to do is come in here and automate, you know, as much as possible here, where we have not just these three issue types, like I was saying, but maybe 10 more, one of the things that I'm going to rely on is that visual self-documenting. I love contrasting that this is a fully set up story. And like you said, we can pretty much tell what it's up to. Even looking at the most basic version of a bunch of the actions that you're going to use to build Tines, and some cool tools we provide you, like a front end, so that you could spin up a process like this that has an internal app on top of it, and then confidently say, no front end developers were harmed in the making of this process. So that's the <laughs> kind of thing that I tend to geek out about when, you know, an infrastructure engineer, an SRE, even an intern could spin this kind of thing up without even touching production instances to show that it's possible. Let's pretend I didn't even have these in my previous life in various developer roles, it has been as complex as I need to go walk over to that physical server and make it so it can send me something. Even if that were the case in times, I could save myself a trip across the room. I am still one of those nerd types who has servers in my office. I could even come in here and just send more data through this story. Here you saw me just send the last action through, but I could come in here and take any of the data that I've already sent through and use it to continue testing my flows or just come in here and say, hey, here's the JSON I want to send through my story in order to see what will happen and if we're capable of accommodating and automating that type of event. So just a few quality of life things I like to highlight in case someone saw this and went, oh, I love that story. I'm going to look that up in the library and get it set up right now. Those are a couple of the things I would hope they would check out as well. Absolutely love it. Thanks, Amelia, Meg. That was, uh, that was awesome. And um as I said, folks, what, I, what, what I'd always preface with um, looking at videos like this and seeing this technology is proof is in the pudding. Like as always, community edition will be links there. This is actually one of those stories that you'll find in our library that, that Meg has ran you through on this. And again, get your hands on it and see for yourself. Honestly, the, uh, the power is in using it. And that's something that we all as a team truly get behind and we all believe. So Again, if there is any other kind of technology or any other use cases that you're interested in, leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed it, like it and share it with someone that you think might handle some AWS alerts. All righty, Meg, thank you so much. That was awesome. Thanks so much, Cam. Happy to share it. And exactly, if anybody thinks this is interesting, it's nice to look at, but it's more fun to play with. Jump into that community edition and yeah, see what you want to build.
Absolutely. All right, folks. See you in the next one. Cheers.